like you ever fell. Live from Atlanta, Georgia. My name is Charlie Maverick, and this is the Mavcast for Friday the 13th, March, Friday the 13th, 2015. I'm here at the dining table once again. Got the shades on because it's so bright in here. And uh, here to talk about a little bit of tech news, as I usually do. For those of you that watched the Mavcast before, you know how I do. Welcome back. Thank you for listening again, and uh, thank you for subscribing or uh, and or donating, uh, doing the fan donation on the YouTube page. If you would like to support the show, you could do so a few ways. You could tell your friends about the show, have them subscribe to the channel, have them watch, listen to the show. They can subscribe to the show on uh, iTunes also to support, or if you wanted to give some monetary, uh, monetonation type uh, support, you can go ahead and uh, give a little bit or a lot on the main YouTube channel page on your desktop by clicking on fan donations. So now I got that out the way, it is time to get down to business. So you guys have been waiting and waiting and waiting for the Apple Watch to drop. You guys have been teased for a long time, especially since Android Wear started to get semi-popular at the end of last year. And watches started to flood out from the manufacturers. We saw the little tease in the fall from Apple about what the Apple Watch can do. Rumors, pricing rumors, um, compatibility rumors, partner rumors, app partnership rumors, all type of rumors. This Apple rumors. They come out early and often. And a lot of those turned out to be true, accurate, and a lot of people might say after the Apple announcement on the Spring Forward event that the Apple Watch was the underwhelming announcement at that uh, keynote presentation. But the MacBook, the new MacBook, the real thin MacBook with the uh, one port was the star of the show. It was the new guy on the block. But technically, the Apple Watch is the new guy on the block. The presentation was just a little bit underwhelming. And it, it leads me to believe that Apple might not be as confident in the first gen product of a smartwatch as they have led us to believe earlier. But we know Apple is very staggered, very calculated, uh, very uh, methodical in how they do their products and how they come out with things, how it works together. So let's take a step back. For those of you that don't know about the Apple Watch, the Apple Watch is a smart watch that goes on your wrist, of course, and is compatible with only Apple devices. The Apple Watch basically is something that houses notifications that help you triage emails, calls, or whatnot. It helps you do smart actions. And you're like, what is smart actions? Well, in home automation, there's a few apps that work with the um, iOS, and you can go ahead and turn off your lights, open your door if you do have the uh, required hardware in your home to do so. Uh, another thing that the Apple Watch is going to be for, like a smartwatch, is mobile payments. Now, Apple stands out with the smartwatch market in terms of mobile payment capabilities because they're really the most popular brand in the world, and they've actually worked in NFC on their smartwatch, even though it's a first gen. So like I said earlier, which I say earlier, like the show has been on for a while, but like I said earlier, Apple is very methodical, very calculated on how they do things. So to get the mobile payments to work first, they had you to get to buy into mobile payments. So they had Apple Pay and Apple Pay works on the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, And now it works on the Apple Watch. So it basically, and, th and this is real cool, and I'll get into it later of how it works and how 
like use case scenarios uh, might fit into your life to where you might want to actually buy this thing. But first, before I get you all bought in and all excited about it, we got to really talk about the price because it's not the capabilities, not the features that are the headlines about this product. It is the price and how it came in on the announcement, the reaction of the crowd, <laughs> the reaction of the Apple fanboys, the, the paid bloggers. Uh, everybody was kind of like a little bit. Okay, so the entry price wasn't a shock because we knew about it before. Now I'll get to where, what the entry price is for. But the top end of the price was way above what people thought it would be. So let's start from the beginning of smartwatch history, kind of. If we could start with the most popular one that's really out before uh, the Apple Watch came to rumor, is the Pebble. The Pebble is a Kickstarter campaign that turned into a product, which turned into be kind of popular. I really never seen too many people in the wild with it, but uh, it's very popular. They raise a lot of money. They put it to market. They sell it in uh, Best Buy. They sell it on um, Amazon and whatnot. So you can buy one. I had a couple of them. It's okay. Battery lasts a long time. Uh, you know, if you download the apps appropriately, you can track a little bit of fitness and whatnot. It's water resistant to a certain level. And it was priced at like what two hundred one fifty two hundred dollars. Then the steel came out and it was a little bit more, more in the middle two hundred dollar range. Um, then you had Android Wear come out with the uh, with their watches, and it was between um, one ninety nine for the Gear Live. I think the Gear Live was the cheapest. And you have some that came out. And it's top in like 300 maybe, 300, depending on the band. So the most popular out of the Android Wear watches to date is the Moto 360, which I have. And I have the uh, Pebble Steel Band on it. Um, the Moto 360 costs $250 with this original band, which is a leather strap. You can either get it gray or black. I have... This is the original band. It's grayish, more pinkish grayish, but um, and that was the entry point of it. So two fifty was you know pushing it right, but we all knew that Apple would come into a price point of three forty nine ninety nine with their base level watch, and we didn't know there was going to be this much models. So let me take off my shades because I have to take you through. Uh, what is actually the price list for the Apple Watch? Because there is a lot of choices to be made. And before I tell you what you can use the Apple Watch for in depth and how I really feel about the Apple Watch, I got to tell you the price first. And if the price is too much, cut the show off. That's fine. But if you are, and if you want to continue here about the Apple Watch, fine. And if you want to educate your friends about the pros and cons of it, fine. But I w it, it would be unjust of me to give you the pricing structure at the end of the show after you've already watched so much um, and heard so much detailed information about it um, that you probably hate me if. Uh, I did that, so I'm not going to do that. Some people do that, but uh, I'm not like network TV, like the news, and they, they have you waiting until the end of the program to give you like the nuts and bolts. <laughs> I'll give it to you now. And pricing is more important than anything. So a lot of people have already hit me up and said, man, I want an Apple Watch to match my iPhone 5S 6, 6 Plus. I'm like, all right, great. So are you willing to invest 500 And they're like, that's not where it starts at. I'm like, no, it doesn't. But, you know, there's a reason why I said that. So we'll start from the bottom. Let's start from the bottom. All right. And I'm doing this because listeners, I'll show it on the screen, but listeners, I have a lot more listeners than viewers. And I'll, I'll run down the pricing structure verbally rather than visually. So even the listeners only can understand. 
All right, so the Apple Watch Sport is the entry level version of the Apple Watch. So the Apple Watch Sport basically has a cheaper build than any of the other ones, has a rubber band, like a rubber actual band on it. Not a rubber band, but you know, the band is made out of rubber, okay? Um, it starts at 38 millimeters. You have your choice of band, white, blue, green, pink, black, to start off. There, there, I'm sure there's going to be other colors later, but this is what we have right then. White, blue, green, pink, and black. Rubber made band. Not rubber made, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, so the pricing for the 38 millimeter, and that's the size of the band and the size of, of how the bezel is going to be in the clasp or, or um, the spacing right here on it. Okay, so it starts at 349. It starts at 349. And this is for the entry level. Now, the 38 millimeter is going to be for people that have smaller wrists, females, uh, really skinny guys, you know, that are not really wanting to have a big watch on their wrist. Now, the 42 millimeter is more for bigger guys, people that have larger wrists, uh, more masculine, I guess. So if you want to say the 38 millimeters for the females, 42 is for the guys. Let's just play like that, however you want to say it. But there's two different size categories. There's only two different sizes, but there are a lot of different choices. So again, 38 millimeters, 349. Now, the 42 millimeter is 399. So if you see right there, there's already a $50 increase on uh, between the sizes. And you're like, well, is it really that much size difference? Well, they have to put more materials in it to make it larger, and the band has to be a little bit wider. So um, say what you will about that. But in my opinion, the sport is – so the sport is going to be the one that people are going to make fun of you for having because it has a – it doesn't have that sapphire screen. It just has a – a, uh, a low resolution screen, and you're talking about a watch. You're like, why well, do I need a high resolution? Well, look, you you understand uh, because the clarity of it and the durability of the screen and the bezel, for that matter, the actual watch part, this part of it, not the band, but this part of it, is is going to be more prone to scratching. It's not going to be as durable. Uh, however. Uh, there you have it. So people, this is going to be the one that people like really like, hey, dude, you got the cheap one. Like this is going to be the cheap one. When we think of sport in terms of cars, it's the step up from the entry level, but not in this case. They're trying, they're great at marketing. So they're using the sport as like, oh yeah, you get this. So if you want to do be really athletic or really like fitness focused with it, you don't have to worry about paying so much um, at the top end to have an Apple Watch. Just get an entry and you can bang it against stuff and be like, oh, this is a throwaway price, really, you know. This is an entry level price, you know. We're not going to give you that great a screen because you're probably going to bump it into stuff and get it scratched up. You're probably going to be active with it. So, like, well, let's do something for those people, you know. Let's just do that. It's like the LX model of a car, you know. You could probably going to have kids in there. Oh, blah, 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 blah. You get blah, 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 blah and, and all that. And you're like, let me get the blah, blah, blah. And you don't have all this stuff in there because for whatever reason, they want to target you. If some people just want to get an Apple Watch, and this is, the, the, this is probably going to be the highest selling segment of the pricing structure. So, you know, you got to give people what they want, but you're not going to get much, you know? So... Uh, the next one is the actual aluminum ones. So, um, I mean, you still have different bands. So, so here's here's the different. You get an an aluminum. You get an aluminum, actual watch there. Better screen. This is the Apple. This is categorized as the actual Apple Watch. Just that, not sport. Not edition, not blah blah blah, but it's the Apple Watch. This is really, this is actually supposed to be the baseline, right? It, th just think of it, you getting a, uh, a a coach purse, women, or 
uh, you getting some type of uh, uh, laptop. Like, let's say you buy it in the Apple and you get the, the lowest version possible, but that's not the, the one that they want you to get, right? So the Apple Watch, this is supposed to be the starting point, but they realize people are not going to pay this much just to start getting into the smartphone arena, uh, smart watch arena, sorry. Uh, so the, the Apple Watch comes with a few different bands. And I can't just list it straight down because the pricing is so all over the place. So let's take it slow, okay? Let, let's take it slow because with this version of it, it depends on the band. And when I go down the list and say what type of bands you get for the price, you're going to be like, what? The band costs that much? I'm not hating against it. I'm just letting you know that you're going to talk trash about it. I'm I'm not going to say, oh, this is old hunky-dory, and you're going to be like, ooh, I hate you for just making this seem like this is the best thing since sliced bread. I'm not going to do that. But, you know, just listen. Just hear me out. All right. So you get the white sport band. So this is the basically the same band that is on the sports edition, the entry level, right? But you have a different material, uh, material made out of the actual watch watch itself, not the band. So the Apple Watch with the sport band, with the black, the white, I think they're only doing black and white. This starts at $549 for the actual 38 millimeter. Five forty nine for the actual, and, and and you're like, whoa, this is what? Wait, this this is over five hundred dollars. Yeah, this is not an impulse buy. This is a decision. You can get a PlayStation Four with a couple of games for five hundred forty nine dollars, or you get a watch for five hundred forty nine dollars. And we're not talking. We're still not talking about the designer the edition of this watch. Okay. All right, we're not, we're, not, we're not even there. So the the sport bands on here, which are interchangeable, but the actual Apple Watch, the 38 millimeter, 549. Now, if you get the 42 millimeter in, with either the white or black sport band, that's 599. So you're up to $600 already. You're still on the, the plastic bands, if that makes sense. Stay with me. All right. So you get the black classic buckle. So here's a this is one step up in terms of bands from the plastic ones. So this is the classic buckle. All right? We're not we're not we're not at leather yet, okay? We're not at leather. Not at leather yet, but the classic buckle is a buckle is made out of I'm not sure what type of material, but it's a buckle. It has a buckle on it, okay? It it has a buckle. So the sports band basically has a way for it to clasp away with, I guess, magnetics or whatnot. But this is a classic buckle. This is a watch that has a buckle like this. Buckle. Doesn't say it's made out of leather. I don't know if it's made out of leather. Probably not made out of leather. Just want to say that. But here we go. 649 for 38 millimeter. And that it went up $100 just because of the band. Whoa. Now, the 42 millimeter is, again, $50 more at $699. Whoa, man, that's expensive. Yes. So you're at $700 for, the, for the, the, the Apple Watch that won't get you laughed at and a, I guess, semi-decent watch band, right? So we're, we're, we're still progressing. So if you get... Uh, If you get like a, a another one that has a, a loop with it, so if if you get like the loop and the, and the way that it is 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 weird. I don't know really how it works, but it, it's still still kind of like entry level band. It's not really gonna look good, good. <clears throat> so they're trying to make you go up. That's gonna be six forty nine to six ninety nine, respectable sizes. Now we get into the leather. Now surprisingly, the leather. <laughs> and let me go to <laughs> let me go to it because this is funny to me. Okay, right now you think they would have pricing for this? They just don't have it listed here. But for the black, the bright blue, the stone leather, 
And the stone leather is kind of kind of be like this, kind of this color. Stone gray, kind of. So for those three, oh, oh, and the light brown, and this is leather. So these are the loop ones, but they are leather. So they're not buckle. They're the loop ones. And they're basically not available for the, uh, the smaller version, the 38 millimeter. They're only available for the larger ones, and they're priced at $6.99 also. So we got the uh, the buckle and the loops, leather or not, are at $6.99 for the larger version of the watch. And for the smaller version, you got very selective uh, type availability. Now here we go in the offset. So the next four different types are available for the smaller version, but not available for the larger version, which is getting confusing a little bit for trying to figure out which one you want. So, and, and this is basically for, um, and, and this is why I said the smaller versions for the females, because these watch bands are probably going to be the ones that are bought by uh, females uh, to wear. So you have the uh, soft pink, and this is a modern buckle. Now, this is it's like mesh, I believe. I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't seen all of them, so bear with me. You have the black modern version. You have the midnight blue modern version of the buckle, and you have the brown modern version of the buckle. So modern, just their own terminology. I don't know really what it is. It's not metal, <laughs> and it's not leather, but uh, this is only available for the 38 millimeter and the 749 for the 38 millimeter. Now we have the link bracelet. Now the link bracelet and the black link bracelet, this is going to be like link, like like this, okay? Um, not sure what the material is, materials are going to be for this, but he, here we go. Here we go. And this is this is going to be, I think it's a, aluminum. Is, it's not aluminum. No, no, what? Stainless steel. Thank you. All right, so stainless steel. Here, here's we, here we go into the stainless steel area. Now, this is stainless steel. And this band, this actual link band only cost $20. Uh, the original one that comes with the Moto 360 is like $50, right? $50, right? So we're still in the, in the Apple Watch category. We haven't gone to the next level of the Apple Watch. So you got the stainless steel, and, and I'm sorry if I didn't uh, mention this before, but the stainless steel is the Apple Watch. The aluminum is basically the sport. If I can backtrack and make sure I got that correct for you guys. Sorry about that. Um, so the links, the link is actually coming in. Um, and um, stainless steel, because it's made of stainless steel, or the black version, and it's basically black version of stainless steel. So we have it for both sizes. You're not going to like it. I just want to let you know you're not going to like it, okay? Uh, this is going to be for $949 for the 38 millimeter, ladies, and very small gentlemen, uh, for the... <laughs> Is nine hundred ninety nine dollars for the link bracelet, the stainless steel link bracelet for the forty two millimeter. Now I haven't gotten to the black one yet. The black one is a link bracelet, but it costs more. How much more? A hundred dollars more. I don't know why, but it's a thousand dollars and forty a thousand forty nine dollars for the thirty eight millimeter, and. $1,099 for the 42 millimeter. Now you're seeing where the price keeps go up. Oh, you thought it went up? You thought it was done? No, I'm not done. I'm not done. Here's, no, no, I'm not done. I'm almost done, but I'm not done. No, not done. So, <laughs> so if you thought that that was pricey, Oh, baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. Nah. I'm getting to the creme de la creme, the, the upper echelon, the top shelf version of these watches. 
we knew these watches were going to be expensive, like Rolexes, you know. Well, wait, I didn't think it was going to be as much as Rolexes. Now, I'm going to talk about why this these pricing, this pricing structure doesn't really work out for most people, or if, if not anybody. But let's just go through it, okay? 18 karat gold. 18 karat gold. All right. So we have we have the watch. Okay. We have the watch. All right. All right. We have the watch, which is 38 millimeter. This is the Apple Watch edition. Mm -hmm. So basically, this in any everything forward, every watch version. And band forward costs no less than ten thousand dollars. So we went from one thousand ninety nine dollars for a respectable band with the respectable size with the Apple Watch. Then we jump all the way to ten thousand dollars for gold versions of it. I'm not even gonna go through every last version of this because. You you guys listen to the show. This is not for you. And if it, if you are dedicating ten thousand uh, dollars to a a watch that's going to be uh, obsolete in a year or two, you got to be rich. I hope because it's not like a Rolex is like a, a one time buy. This is something you got to keep on buying. Like, oh, we got, got a different version, and it actually looks good? Man, that $10,000 suck. And this is a first gen, by the way. So we complained about the price for a lot of stuff, right? So basically, the 18 karat gold, the rose gold with white sport band. Dude, you get a white sport band. You know what white sport band is? That's the plastic band. You get a plastic band with this. You know what? Maybe I need to go through this whole thing. So the plastic band, the sport band is plastic, dude. You get a white sports band, right? A white sports band. And this is the price for the rose gold, 18 karat gold, or the yellow gold. So rose gold, white gold, yellow gold. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. But the band is plastic. You pay $10,000 for the 38 millimeter for 18 karat gold on this, but you still have a plastic band for the rest of it. $10,000 for a 38 millimeter. 42 millimeter is $12,000. I didn't make up the price. Don't look at me like that. No, don't look at me like that. First of all, it's not my fault. I'm just reading what to have. Next, where we go. And if you remember the type of buckles that I talked about, it's basically with the watch bands now, okay? It's basically the watch bands. So we got the 18 karat gold, the yellow, the um you got the yellow gold, okay. So you got the yellow gold with this. This is only available in the larger versions. Basically, you get the classic buckle in black or midnight blue. And that's fifteen thousand. So we're still not seeing a gold band yet. For fi you're fifteen thousand in. You can buy a car. Fifteen thousand. Buy a pretty darn good subcompact car. You can buy a Toyota Yaris for fifteen thousand. Go a good place. You get a Honda Fit. Fifteen thousand. Just saying. This is car territory. And you ain't going to keep this as long as you do a car. Not even a lease. Not even a lease. All right. Now, we're up to the last one. Okay. We're up to the last one. So we're still in the yellow gold. And we're in the rose gold. Still 18 karat. Now, this is weird. All right. This is weird. All right. So basically, you're still not going to get a metal band. You're going to get a modern buckle. So the buckle, the buckle doesn't even, uh, the buckle doesn't buckle. The buckle snaps, 
but it doesn't buckle like this. It doesn't it doesn't go in. Sorry about the noise. It doesn't go in like this. Okay. It doesn't go in. No. This sucker just buckles like is a button or like it's a button. It's like a button, like a a jacket button that snaps and looks like a buckle. This is seventeen thousand dollars, people. You never got a metal band. You never got a metal band. You never got an aluminum band that was gold plated. You didn't even get a real gold band. But you're at seventeen thousand. Seventeen thousand dollars. You can get a Toyota. You get a Honda Civic. You can get a good deal on a Altima. You can all right, you can buy a whole bunch of look. You can if it's car prices for a now. I'm not opposed to you paying seventeen thousand dollars for a watch that's gonna last you a lifetime, and you keep handing it down to the generations like someone's Rolex. You keep it looking good. That Rolex lasts forever. This is a smart watch. It's not going to last forever. So anyway, so we, we we're, we're done with the actual um, we're done with the actual pricing. Now it's time to look at why you need this. So you, to be honest, you don't need it. For the sport versions, it doesn't have GPS in it. If you want to do mobile payment, that's fine. It's going to have Apple Wallet in it. Apple Pay, Apple Wallet, basically. It's going to use NFC. It's going to be secure for your payments to do that if you want to do tap to pay. It's going to allow you to enter your hotel rooms for participating hotels. It's going to allow you to use Uber in a different way. It's going to allow you to look at your ESPN information in a different way. It's going to allow you to track your fitness in a different way. None of these watches can be worn in the shower, even the sport version. Just want to put that out there because some people are going to try it. They are resistant, very, very small level water resistance. Sweat is what they mean what, when, they, when they say water resistant. Because you're going to sweat when you wear it. If you, I mean, especially if you get the rubber sport band. Sport band. It's going to be rubber. And it's going to make you sweat, especially in the summer. You're going to sweat. And then it's gonna, the, the watch is going to be close to you. And it's going to sweat. Now, why does it need to be sweat proof? Because with this watch, to make sure that it's secure for Apple Pay, it has to recognize your skin so when it contact when it, when it contacts you makes a connection with your your skin your wrist it's gonna make it's gonna have you type in some type of uh, authorization code on authentication code make sure that no one else is wearing your watch while you're actually trying to pay but here's the good thing about it here's the good thing about it it has Wi-Fi which you're like, why does it have Wi-Fi? Well, it extends the use of the watch once you go out of Bluetooth range. And this is really big because when I wear Android Wear and I get out of Bluetooth range, it sucks down the battery. And you can't really use it unless you're using it for the time. You can't use it for anything else except like tracking steps because it has a pedometer in it. But you really can't use it now once you have the wi-fi connected to it you can extend the range of uh how far you can get from the actual device it's very confusing also if if i'm i know i'm being very terrible about segueing today because you know the apple watches has me confused i just want to say i am very very confused by the apple watch and i've been following smart watches for a while and not to say that i'm not going to want one down the road but it confuses me in the in terms of the functionality. You have different ways of doing different things. There's not a streamlined way. Apple is known for making things to be easy to use. And that's the Steve Jobs mentality. That's 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 his culture. 
Now, this has been the first product since Steve that has not ever had him included even in the ideas of it. Okay, so this is all new. And I can tell by the way that the, the usability of it, it's not... If, if Steve had input in it, it would be different. So you have touch gestures. You have the digital crown, which is the dial on the side, which you use to scroll through stuff. You have pressure-sensitive touches to do different things, to move around. You have glances, but you can't do glances from a certain screen. You got you got to do it from another screen. Yeah, you got this and that, blah, blah, blah. And, and you got these little app icons that you tap on. And I saw people in the demo, and there's just like spending time trying to make sure you didn't tap the wrong one and I'm like okay I'm I'm totally confused and I'm a tech geek and of course you probably are too if you're listening and you want to know about stuff that you can get and use but this this is not uh it, it seems more cumbersome than 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 intuitive if you ask me and I'm again I'm not hating on it I'm not hating on it you know, this is the first gen. This is something Apple never did before. You know, they make the hardware and the software, all right? It's not like Google that depends on the hardware manufacturers to make sure that the software works, all right? Everything was done in Apple's realm, Apple's nation. But it seems to me that there was a misstep of making it easy to use. If I have to go through all these gestures, look at my wrist and all that, and and I'm just like, <laughs> listeners only. I'm um, sorry, but I'm 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 just like scrolling through, like you're like you're doing all this. Just get to nap. You might as well take out your phone, right? You might as well take out your phone. Now, I hope in a different software release down the road that it makes it a little bit easier. The digital crowd's fine for zooming and scrolling. That's fine. That that's I, I can understand that. But the way that you use the apps, get to the apps and all of that, I don't really get that yet. The app does, I mean, the uh the the watch does not have GPS for the sports version. So you guys and gals out there are thinking you're just gonna get optimal tracking with you know no GPS in here. No GPS in there. Even though it's the sport version, it's no GPS. That's why I say it's the entry level, the one that everybody's going to make fun of you for having because uh, it's a smaller um, or a lesser, sorry, lesser pixel density, uh, smaller quality, uh, lesser uh, quality uh, screen, uh, and it's uh, it's not going to be stainless steel. It's going to be aluminum. So people are going to like, well, you just got the entry level, dude. You know, but a lot of people are going to get that one just because they want to get into the Apple Watch. They want a watch that matches with uh, their Apple Watch, with their uh, with their iPhone. So why why would you want to buy a Apple Watch? Well, this is a lot of people that are going to buy the Apple Watch because they're Apple fans. Um they heard about the Apple Watch for a while, and they want to see if this is really going to make their life better. I'm going to tell you right now by using Android Wear, and Android Wear is different in terms of how you use it than than the Apple Watch. It's different because it uses Google Now, and Google Now is more predictive, telling you things that you need to know based off calendar, based off of behavior, that what you search for, the weather, and stuff like that. It tells you it, it tells you about traffic. Uh, it does navigation on the on the phone? I mean, sorry, on the watch, but it's all tied through the phone. It works differently. It's a to me, it's a little bit easier to use because you only the the crown on here. Is only used to turn on the screen and turn off the screen, or hold it and get to the settings. Everything else is touch touch gestures on the watch. It's not pressure sensitive, so you don't have to figure out if you need to press hard to do this or press lesser to do that. Uh, you never know when you're going to be drunk on the on the Apple Watch and be like, Arr! "Oh, I didn't mean to do that," but. 
there are advantages and disadvantages of having it. So the advantage of having it is going to be you taking out your phone uh, less than you do now. Like everybody pulls out their phone over a hundred times a day just to check the time. It's going to tell time. Duh. It's going to track your fitness. It's going to help you call Uber. <laughs> it's going to work with a lot of uh, home uh, automation. Turn off the lights, adjusting the thermostat, unlocking the door. It's going to work with a lot of that. It's going to be great. But first gen, mm, do you want to get the first gen? I don't know. Does it look good? Do, to be honest, let's get down to it. First of all, the watch has to look good for you to wear it. You're not going to wear an ugly watch just because you can have it talk to your phone. I've done it and I've backed out of each purchase that I have done that with. I see the Pebble functions great. You can't do a lot of stuff that you can do with Android Wear or uh, the Apple Watch, but whatever it advertised to do, it does it flawlessly. It still looks like you're a seventh grader wearing a Casio watch. Those of you that grew up back in the day, people laughed at other people that wear Casio watches, like the calculator watches, called you a nerd. It didn't look like something an adult should wear, right? You had the uh, Galaxy Gear Live Square. It was made okay, okay at best. It is just like the Galaxy um, Gear stuff. You know, Samsung's proprietary watches that works with only Samsung stuff. The square or rectangular. It didn't really look good. It made people stop and like, ooh, it's one of those watches. You know the funny thing? Whenever I wear the square watch, people are like, hey, is that the Apple watch? Whenever I wear the rectangular watch, they're like, ooh, that's a nice watch. So that, that leads me to believe because the, the Gear Live and the Galaxy, whatever, uh, fitness gear, the, the Nano or whatever they have, it still doesn't look like a you, – you don't wear it with a suit, okay? You don't wear it with a suit. It doesn't look good when you're dressed up. It looks like you need to grow up, basically. And the Apple Watch looks like that to me, honestly. Like people wear rectangular watches all the time. I see them all the time. But it doesn't look like something you want to wear and be taken seriously. The only the only few watches that I've seen that people will take you seriously while you wear it and not call you a like immature adult is one that's that look like this or better. That actually looks like a traditional high-end watch. And this is a high-end watch. But it's not a high end price. The, the Apple Watch, it, if you get the cheap version, if you get the the expensive version, the only difference is the size of it and the materials. But the design looks the same, and it's square, and it's not that good looking. When I mean, it's better looking than the Pebble, but that's like saying, um, that's like saying, hey man, why don't you go talk to that girl? I was like, I don't want to talk to her. She's ugly. She looks better than uh, Shanene. What? <laughs> if you don't know who Shanene is, just Google it. But is is it, you have a low, a low like thing point for stuff like that to to be like you have to. You have to be you're not taken seriously on that on that front. It, it's it's it doesn't make any sense to me that people would just say this watch looks great and it doesn't. If you feel the watch looks good, fine. But don't you lie to yourself just to be in the in crowd with Apple and say this watch is the best looking watch ever. Like like um, what, what's his name? 
uh, last name Stein from CNET. Anyway, guy with the glasses reviews all the smartphone stuff. He is all in loving the way that it looks. He also loves the Pebble. He bashes the Moto 360, though. Like, dude, the Pebble Steel, to me, the Pebble, to me, now that I have actually used a better-looking watch, I know better to say that, yo, that doesn't look good as a watch. When I wore the Pebble, no one ever said, hey, that's a good-looking watch. They're like, what is that? <laughs> Both times when I had it, I had the red one, and they were really like, well, what the hell is that? And I had the black one. Well, the black one was a little bit better, but they're still like, what the hell is that on yours? What was that? Is that a watch? Is that one of those calculator watches? And I was like, yeah, let me get this off. I had a rubber band on it, and it was, it was like, ugh, dude. So you mean to tell me you're going to pay... All this money for the Apple Watch, which doesn't really look that much better than the Pebble Steel. And you're going to have non-metal bands on it. And the bands cost that much. I'm all into getting an iPhone. I'm all into doing that. I'm all in. I've been loyal to Android for a long time. And it's time for me to move on to iOS. I have an iPhone here for work, iPhone 5S. I have a Moto um, X 2014 right here. It's time for me to move on from Android. It's time for me to go all in from my personal phone to an iPhone. I'm all in. Love the fact that that's going to happen. However, I am not going to enjoy the fact that I won't be able to use this watch anymore. So uh, this will, this is on Swappa.com to buy. And in conjunction with the Galaxy, uh, sorry, the uh, Samsung Gear Live, selling them both together. But I am not, I am not enthused about getting the Apple Watch. I'm not. I've been there, done that with smart watches. The only thing that might keep me on Android is the disdain for the Apple Watch that I have. I don't want to go back to just wearing a square watch. I don't want to do that. It's ugly. If they make it round, this says it's going to fix everything. When when the when the Android Wear watches came out, they're like. It's not round. So they made a round one. They're like, it's not round enough. So they made a really, really round one. And they're like, that's cool. And then the Apple Watch came out and it wasn't round. And they were like, that's a great looking watch. What? I hope you watch the show just for that. Just for that comment. What? Just because it's Apple. And I'm not saying don't drink the juice. I'm not saying don't drink the Kool-Aid. Because Apple has done things to where uh, it has put them in a position to where people would flood to them for this product. And I don't blame them. But you guys got to understand. If you pay this money, much money for a watch that doesn't look that good, you're going to have buyer's remorse. Then... They might release another one next year. Might. Probably will. And then you're going to have to figure out how to not only flip a, a older iPhone to get the new one, but you're going to have to flip the Apple Watch to get a new one. Who does this benefit? Well, it's like Gazelle.com, Swappa.com, eBay, Amazon, people that sell on those sites – Benefits a lot. You can flip that. You can flip it. But 
do you really want one more thing that you have to worry about upgrading all the time? Like, it's getting to a point where everything needs to be upgraded. Like, if you get too much tech in your car, you're not going to get the full benefit of that tech that you paid the highest price for because the next year they're going to make something that much better that makes yours look like shit. And then you're like, ooh, I could have saved $15,000 if I was more strategic in what I got in the tech package. That's why CNET has CNET on cars. Check the tech on there to make sure you don't overpay for needless tech, right? The same thing here. Same thing here. There is no end all be all use case scenario for this watch except for telling time or to be the cool kid in the bunch. And I'm just saying that I'm saying that as an owner of two smartwatches and the past owner of multiple smartwatches. You know, I I say that sometimes I don't even turn on the connection to the smartwatch to the phone and I just wear it as a watch. And people, you know, I like it and it still tells time. I pay for my Starbucks with my watch. That's great. That's awesome. I don't work out with the watch. I don't sleep with the watch. I don't, I don't, you know, it's just something that's cool. But I still pull out my phone. I still pull out my phone. Do you need it? No, of course not. But do you need a, a lot of the stuff that we get? No. But it's cool to have. So I'll say this. I say this. I, I give you a lot of caveats on the Apple Watch, this pricing structure, and all of that. So now you can go forth and make a educated decision of if you're gonna get this one, if you're gonna wait till the next generation, or are you just gonna get a regular watch? Getting a regular watch is fine. Who's is who's is this hurt? Who does this hurt? You know, it's going to ultimately hurt Jawbone. It's going to ultimately hurt the Nike Fuel Band. Because the Jawbone doesn't have GPS in it. The Fuel Band doesn't have GPS in it. Those, the, the most devices of those two brands that were sold were in the Apple stores. Since the Apple Watch is now coming to market, Apple has taken the Jawbone and the Nike Fuel Band off the shelves. You can still get them other places like Best Buy, Amazon, stuff like that. But they were moving numbers while being in that store. They're going to take a hit for that. And people are going to basically be like, well, if it doesn't have GPS in it anyway, well, I just get the watch in that. Well, I'll tell you why. First of all, you, you're not going to sleep with the watch on. Second of all, you're not going to wear the watch in the shower because you're going to kill it. And then it's going to be water, like money down the drain. So sorry about that. I mean, there's a lot of things you got to worry about. There's a lot of things you got to think about with getting this watch versus the fitness bands. And I'm, I had a fitness band too, and I'm all into that. You know, you do what you want to do. I went through all this technology, and I'm here to tell you, you really don't need it. The smartwatch, you don't need. Smartphone, you do need. I mean, the smartphone has given countless and is continuing to give you countless reasons why to get a smartphone versus not having one. You can, you, banking, uh, music, fitness, uh, home automation, uh, anything, a freaking calculator. Who else, who sells calculators nowadays? You can do it on your phone. Calendar stuff, like agendas. The agenda books are like going the way of the dodo. But there's still, there's still a hardcore market for it. Um, a, a whole bunch of things. Navigation. They got to push the navigation in these cars because these standalone navigation systems are not making are not pushing numbers because of the smartphone. Cameras. Oh, you 
get a smartphone for the camera. You buy a smartphone, you dictate what smartphone you get because of the camera. Some some people do that. Mm-hmm. Instead of getting a standalone camera, they're like, well, this is the camera I always have on me. But can you say that about the watch? Can you really say that about the watch? Can you really say, Charlie, I have a perfect everyday use case for a smartwatch that every day I'm talking about every single day and not just for the first two months, but every last day. Sure, you can check the time. You can check the time anywhere. There's time everywhere. You're always on a computer. There's time on a computer. There's time on uh, in your car. There's time on your phone. There's time on your TV. It doesn't mean you have to get the watch. You don't need the watch. Check your heart rate. It's not accurate anyway. Oh, you're like, oh, yeah, I need to check my heart rate. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get the watch to check my heart rate. It's not accurate. It's not accurate. Because it's on this side and not this side where your vein is. It's not, it's not doing any, like, you know Check your blood pressure, blah, blah, blah. Oh, well, you can't. Look, look, you're telling the time. You're answering calls. You're answering emails. I want, look, I haven't, I haven't seen anything that blows my mind about this. And I still say that Android Wear is a better option for a smart watch. Now I'm going to I'm gonna say something that is going to piss some people off, and I've been saying it gradually over time. But Android has become the Windows of smartphones. Apple is, of course, the Apple of smartphones. Because smartphones were around before Apple came along and made the iPhone, but they just made it better. Argue. That's I mean, that's arguable. So it's like the uh, the watch right now it's is it is fixing a problem that you don't have, really, right? Is it, is it is it or is it not fixing the problem that you do not currently have? Like the iPhone fixed the uh, the problem that a lot of people had. The watch, the fitness trackers, fi- fixed the problem that a lot of fit active people had. I want to track. I want to track. I want to track. Healthy, healthy, healthy. Stay in shape. Talk to those people. Also, those really, really active people, talk to those people. And they're like, they just go about their day on the normal fitness routine and they're wearing it because it motivates them. But past that, are they really obsessed with the tracking of this stuff? Does it really, really benefit them? I mean, it's cool to have, but is it going to change your life? First too much, you're going to think that. After that, you're like, I'm bored with it. What am I going to do now? What's the next big thing? (laughs) So I ask you this question. How important is it to you to get your text messages and your calls on your wrist? Essentially, that's what you're getting. And if I am willing to sell both of my smartwatches, then you know it's not really any diehard use case for it. Hope you make the right decision. We're hitting on an hour right now on the dot, wrapping up the show real quick. Hope I didn't uh, put you to sleep. <laughs> it's not been the easiest uh, flowing topic i might say because i do i'm still confused there's so much to say about it so much to gripe about and but i would say this 
I'll say this one thing. Win or lose with the Apple Watch is going to excel the smartwatch market exponentially. It will. You don't think it will? Just like Apple Pay is accelerating mobile payments as we speak. And Google actually had a stronghold on the carriers with soft card mobile payments and say, we're going to buy that. You're going to put Google Wallet on every um, every capable device possible, every Android device. You're going to load that, preload that with Google Wallet so people could do mobile payments so we don't fall behind the game. Google Wallet was around before Apple Pay, but Apple Pay changed the entire makeup of it. Like, like people say they need it, All right? So, while I don't like the functionality or the design of the watch or the price, for God's sake, the price, what it would do, what it's going to do for the industry is going to blow your mind. Like, we need this to succeed. As tech lovers, we need this to succeed. I just think that Apple might, it just seems like, I, I don't know. It just seems like it is very cumbersome to use. It's overpriced for what you get. And I hope it doesn't screw it up. Like they were doing so well, then this came, came out and people were like, well, there goes that shit. I hope it works. And you never know, like a few months down the road in the fall, after you know, I had my new shiny iPhone for a while, which I don't have yet. And I'm like, hey, you know the honeymoon's over. Me and iPhone six. I need something else. I need another watch. To get another watch. And then I'm and then the whole thing is gonna go all over again. And you're like, Charlie, you remember all that you said before? I like, yeah, I know, but you know how I go. <laughs> but for right now, version one, Apple Watch ain't looking so good. It's not looking good at all. You know, I said that about the iPhone, the first gen iPhone. You know, that really didn't go over so well for me. It really didn't. It didn't have apps. It looked all right, but it wasn't like, oh, snap, I got to get that. Maybe this will take some time. I'll be optimistic. See, if you listen to the whole show, you see how I went through the whole phase, the whole emotion train. But I'm optimistic. Maybe it might do okay phase one. And phase two, it just whoosh, takes off. You can't hit a home run all the time. But maybe they might get like first, you know, first they hit a single. Maybe they might get a double. Maybe, you know, I'm talking about sports phases right here. Maybe they might get like an RBI. I don't know. But maybe they might hit a home run. Who freaking knows? They're expected to ship millions of these things. I don't doubt that at all. But will you like it? Or will you be like, man, I paid too much for this shit. Ugh. I could just use my phone. People beg for the day that they can just have the phone on them and do everything with the watch. Not at that point yet. The promise is that for that to happen, but we're not at that point yet. Trust me, we're not at that point yet. So a lot of app developers that come on board, we're not at that point yet. No, don't let them fool you. We're not, we're not at that point yet. One day, maybe. Mobile payments on using a watch, legitimately using mobile payments with your watch is huge. In my opinion, that's the selling point of the watch. Nothing else. They could drop the fitness because whatever they can drop the the pricing structure give a crap about that they could just drop they could just sell one version of it 
in two different sizes, your choice of smart, uh, your choice of bands, and say, hey, this is, is, is a bona fide and legitimate extension of your iPhone, and we are just putting this out there so you can use Apple Pay more. So you can you can pay everything with your apps or with, through your apps with the watch. Then you could glance and see some calls and and text message and answer the calls if you want. And blah 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 blah. You know, screw the other stuff. That's what makes sense. That use case makes sense. Do you need it? No, because you still have your phone on you. So do you still need the watch? No. You take the watch out and be like, bow. Got it. But that's the killer feature. Nothing else. I don't care you can be next to someone that has another Apple Watch and like, let me draw you a cat and send it to you. I don't care about that. I don't know. Just me. Just me. Just me. I don't know if you feel the same, but if you if you do feel any different, leave a comment. Let me know. Again, of uh, have your friends and family subscribe to the channel to support. Follow the blog at www.themavcast.blogspot.com. Subscribe to the YouTube channel or the blog. And do both. If you want to give a monetary donation, you could do that on the main YouTube page on the fan donations. If you want to support the show by following me off social networks, you can do that by following me on Twitter at the Mavcast. Uh, you can do the same by following me on Google Plus. Don't follow me on Facebook. Just don't do it. Please. I'm not, I'm not even gonna don't even follow me on Facebook. But I do appreciate everyone listening, watching. Subscribe to the show on iTunes, favorite podcast catcher, and I'll see you on next show. You have a great day.